Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we're going to be doing something a little outlandish, but I think it's going to be kind of cool. We've got probably the quietest 50 cal suppressor that I know of. This is the Aklas Hades. Uh, this is a substantial suppressor you can see here on the single shot upper. Uh, we are inside of a building with a mm, pretty respectable backstop here. We're going to fire this thing and just see how it sounds. I'm not going to use ear pro, but uh, you know, we're going to shoot a 50 indoors just to have a little bit of fun. And then we'll probably pull this thing apart and show you a little bit more about how it's made, but pretty dang quiet considering. So I'm going to put my mask on and we're going to give it a try. All right, here we go. You ready, Chad? Send it. You know, that's actually a lot quieter than I would expect. I mean, I'm not wearing ear pro and we are indoors. I know outdoors can be a little bit different. It's really not that bad. Uh, we checked our backstop. Everything's good to go there. You know, it's a pretty dang awesome suppressor. So I'll tell you what, we're going to go in here. I'm going to get Joe here. I'm actually at Atlas today. We're going to pull this thing apart and have a look, talk a little bit more about this suppressor. Let's do it. All right, Eric, I appreciate you putting your trust in me. It is kind of a tough sell when I tell people, look, this thing is indoor and it's comfortable shooting and hearing safe with full power loads. So I appreciate you trusting me in that and did it, did it kind of meet your expectations? It's pretty dang cool is what it is. You know, uh, it, it's one of those deals where like, you know, I'm a Barrett M107 kind of guy and I know that this suppressor is probably not quite so kosher on something like an auto loader like the 107, but definitely has me kind of wanting to look at maybe getting a single shot just so I can run something like this to run 50 suppressed. Uh, those 750 grain rounds, you know, those Hornady uh, Amaxes there, really not overly loud at all. I mean, I expected it to be a lot louder. Yep. It really wasn't bad. Uh, this is one of the, the first projects I started with uh, whenever I kind of came on board with the older company. Uh, and it's something that me and Charlie worked together with. And it worked well, but it wasn't to the level of what this is. Uh, my current R&D guy helped us develop the current monocore that's in it that is really taking this can to the next level. And it really is, uh, from all of our testing, all of our experience, the quietest suppressed 50 in the world. Uh, it is a very efficient core, so it doesn't work well on the recoil systems for like the 107s and the 82s. Uh, it does work very well with gas regulating guns like the Serbu and like some of the others. Cool. Any of the single shot or bolt action guns, it works well. We've put them on um, the Armalite AR-50s, uh, a lot of the different AR style uppers, uh, some of the single shots, uh, things like that. If it's if it's a non-recoil energy based rifle, then uh, it should work just fine. So if you've got something you want to suppress in 50, we can probably retrofit it to the system. That's pretty dang neat, you know, and uh, one thing that I, that I notice about it, it seems like the tube diameter, you've got a whole lot of volume for expansion mm -hmm. and everything like that, which I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit more uh, here in a moment. But then also the thing about it is that it really does, it didn't kick hardly at all. So it does help with the recoil as well. And you did shoot it offhand, so that helps a tremendous amount. If you, uh, if you are prone and you kind of tuck behind it, it is a bolt action rifle, it's fairly light. The suppressor does kind of kill some of the braking effect of muzzle brakes normally on 50s. Sure. Uh, so it does have some significant recoil, which if you notice we have a, an EOTech on this. Um, after about our third scope bite in two days at a test event, we decided, you know what, let's just put a red dot on it. Nobody's really shooting it past 300 yards anyway. Sure. Um, so it's a real light system, and it does have decent recoil. But the suppressor, again, suppressors will have a tendency of breaking down recoil and, and lessening it. In this particular case with the 50, the brakes have to be very efficient. This suppressor in this case does slightly increase the recoil. Okay. I noticed too, we shot it over the uh, chronograph off, ca off camera there and I mean, it was kind of weird. Like I was thinking, okay, please don't kill the chrono. Please don't kill the chrono. That's and exactly what I was saying too. <laughs> it was like 2,600 feet per second. Yeah. So still generating some good uh, muzzle velocity. So this is considered more or less an integral, I guess, by, by definition because of the way that that brake is mm -hmm. in there and everything. It is a 22 inch barrel. 
So the barrel's 22 inches, so it doesn't go into the SBR realm like most other integrals, so the tube's not permanently attached. Cool. But it is an integral, kind of like a reflex system uh, to take advantage of as much volume without adding the extreme length to it. Sure. Uh, but 22 inches still gives good velocity, as you saw, 2,600 feet per second. Yeah. Suppressors do add a little bit of what's called free bore boost. As the bullet exits the barrel, normally it, stop, it has to stop accelerating. Well, in a suppressor, you still have a little bit of back pressure, so you'll get another 50 to 65 maybe 70 feet per second That's from, that, little bit. from that uh, free bore boost. Nice. So we'll look at some of the components here. I know uh, you, you described some of these components to me yesterday when we were talking about this, but you've basically got a titanium tube. Correct, yep. All right, that this thing is comprised of here. Now this one's kind of rough looking because it's not coated, but this is kind of a demo here. This is, this is the tube uh, that we have in inventory. Uh, in preparation of its its fitment onto the gun. Sure. Uh, this in this particular case, Safety Harbor makes a particular build for us. That's it's a little it's the 22 inch barrel, but has a longer handguard, so it's ready to go. So it's a fairly inexpensive and easy retrofit to the Safety Harbor uppers. Neat. The others we have to do some threading and things like that. Sure. But they're ready to go. Keep them in inventory to to set up for your guns. So gotcha. This is just one ready to go in inventory. So it is uh, one of those deals where. If somebody wanted something like this put on their gun, you guys are going to pretty much retrofit it for them. Like they're going to need to be in most built cases. and fit into each yeah. gun. So whether you have to like turn the barrel on an AR-50 or whether it's a, a deal where there has to be some diameter thing that has to be overcome mm -hmm. or something like that. So that's that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It is a drop-in on the 18-inch gun, but mm -hmm. the 18-inch gun has the same setup, the same length here to here, mm -hmm. but it's a shorter handguard. So it is drop-in on an 18 inch, or it is drop-in on this particular version of the 22 inch, which I believe nice. uh, I believe they are offering now because it does look really cool even without the can on it. Absolutely, uh, a little bit longer handguard, so you can use the the longer XO rail, which gives you the ability to put just all kinds of night vision thermals and things of that nature. And it's got it. that gnarly break on the end. Mm -hmm. It's yep. got a very very efficient break, which we still utilize into our system here because it it effectively does exactly what we want it It kind do. of adds additional expansion mm -hmm. and, and mitigation of that initial you know initial sound signature mm -hmm. coming out of the gun which yep. is kind of neat kind of like the way um you know I, I guess it would really be indicative of the way a lot of suppressors work in conjunction with like a break if you have a break that's threaded for like let's say like a ratchet on style can like the old school aacs or something that just ratchet on well then by having let's just say a, a two-chamber break in there that's a, providing a little bit of additional yep. kind of disruption of the gases so to speak so you're kind of getting that same effect here. absolutely I really like that setup because the break is taking the initial brunt the powder coming out of the muzzle is initially very very high velocity very very hot and very very abrasive so if we put something very inexpensive like a 40 to 75 dollar break it's taking all that area and that's our wear point Plus, you have the braking effect, which does offer some additional suppression. Well, it makes so sense for it to be kind of sacrificial. That mm -hmm. way, if that thing gets all burned out, that's simply just an issue of just swapping it out for a new one. There you go. It's like a sacrificial part. Yeah. That's not a part of the suppressor, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So it, it, it does lengthen the, the life of the can. Nice. Yeah. So let's look at some of the components here. I know, uh, I know it might be hard for some of you to kind of visualize like exactly how this thing's put together, but... He's got the components kind of broke down here just to show you what this thing's all about. Well, let's kind of start from the rear and work our way forward. All right. Kind of the direction the bullet flies. So we start with our base gun. In this case, it's a 22-inch barrel. So the barrel ends here. So we have to have the tube attached to something. And that's our rear mount system. And the rear mount system just replaces the factory cap that holds the, the forearm on. So mm -hmm. retrofits to there. Now you have your cap on it. On there, we have the barrel extending through it. And before the brake is installed, we have this bat wing system. And the bat wing gets timed to the brake because we want those gases, those high velocity gases coming out of the gills of that braking system to bypass through these cutouts. It looks like something that Batman would actually have on his utility belt. So we actually <laughs> made some we made some <laughs> fidget spinners out of these. Oh, uh, I took no. the same program <laughs> just because yeah, uh, but those gases vent through here. They have a free direction through these sides here. 
All right. And once they enter the back here, then they're dammed in and it'll cross flow back out through the holes. Uh, Very this cool. is, it does, it adds as a baffle, but it mostly supports because it is a significantly long can, but it gives two points of support. So you get the, you get the additional support and then you're essentially turning the brake into a direction in, in, imposing kind of like causing all those gases to kind of go, whoa, hang on, and then kind of move around a bit. Correct. Uh, so we have our rear mount, the tube. Mm -hmm. This is the shoulder where the brake would screw to. This goes behind that, and the brake screws on top of the batwing. Mm -hmm. And then the brake ends here. And this is where the magic starts. Uh, that's where the core comes into Oh, play. that is a gnarly piece of hardware there. Uh, it starts at about 126 ounces of steel. <laughs> In this particular case, this is a 17.4. And when we're done with it, it's about 20, 24 ounces, 24 to 25 ounces. So you can see there's a lot of material coming out of that. No doubt. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's a significantly long cycle time. It's about a six hour cycle time. <laughs> and then the end cap, uh, because we have to have some way to interface it in here. Instead of just having this threaded area and solid, we have the end cap to give us an additional airspace. Because suppressors, uh, the more volume we fit in it, the better we can go. Well, and then so obviously the end cap also kind of holding the whole thing together. You know, the yeah. sleeve goes over it, end cap kind of holds the whole game together there. And that seals it right here. Nice. So all the, all the Atlas Hades systems do use titanium tubes because it is a significant weight in that area. If we use 316 or some of the other tubings, it would be probably two and a half to three pounds heavier, which, I mean, that's, that's almost 30%. You know, I'd be willing to bet that a system like this, especially, and, and we might be going further down the rabbit hole than you want to go in the scope of this video, but maybe a K version of this and run on like 50 Beowulf might be kind of cool. That's, it's a lot of volume, Maybe. Uh, something like that. We can probably get away with one of our Hawker systems. Yeah, okay. Uh, the Hawker 45, uh, we bored them out and run them on 50 Beowulf. Um, Bushmasters, isn't it, what's the 50 450, caliber? 450 Bushmaster. Isn't there a 50 caliber Bushmaster? Well, you got 500 GI. Magnum. Or, yeah, 50 GI. Yeah. 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 Uh, all cool. of those, we've bored out some of our Hawkers for those. You know, I've seen some people build some like 50 GI bolt guns. Mm -hmm. And they're, and they're awfully quiet because you're getting some pretty heavy pills and a, a nice compact uh, action, which you know makes for a, a shorter cycling bolt. So some of those things kind of matter to some folks, you know. I know some people have done like um, some one-off guns and some kind of weird things. So yeah, that's like I've got my 458 bolt gun over there uh, that works really well. But that's one thing that we've developed is there's really two types of baffle systems. There's a delta system which works on the higher pressures like the rifle calibers, like uh, 450, uh, Beowulf, 458 SOCOM. They're a little bit lower velocity, lower pressure. So they need to use a little bit different baffle structure. You, okay. can, use, you can use uh, also um, less expensive materials and get the same performance out of it. Cool, um, sounds fun. But what we can do is because it is it's 50, it's a big can, you can add a little bit of weight to it. This is the 316, uh, actually 17.4 version, the stainless core. Very cool. We also offer it in a titanium core. That's what we have here. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Probably increases the price a good bit to go something, it, something like it that. It does. It does. But uh, very, very, very strong. And it adds about 25%. It's dippable and all that if you so choose, you know. That's pretty cool. Yep. Uh, the stainless is dippable as well, but I'm glad you mentioned that because this particular gun, we have somewhere above 1,600 rounds. We stopped counting. Uh, it's it's probably approaching 2,000 rounds, and we've never cleaned the core on this particular gun. Yeah, you know, let's see how gnarly it looks. And I know on, on my 50s, one of the things that I see a lot of times is especially on like the break of a 107 or something like that, you'll get that kind of bluish, greenish kind of color that will, that will come about. And what that is is actually oxidation caused from copper deposits. Um, you know, jackets on 50 cals are, are pretty gnarly. You know, mm -hmm. they have to be pretty tough to be able to contain the bullet and everything and to give it kind of, I guess, 
what would it be more of a density kind of thing like making sure the bullet you know the construction of the bullet has to be pretty good to be able to hold up to those kind of pressures and that copper kind of getting out of there can eventually oxidize all right so this is our core uh, this is the original core that that's been with this tube uh, it's it's seen lots and lots of test days and lots of action yep uh, this is the only core that I've ever seen out of all the ones that has any erosion at all. And this is what you can see. You can see a little bit of blast erosion. It doesn't affect the performance, but it's enough to know what that, what that high velocity powder is doing. That's right. And, and it kind of makes it nice to know that that break is right there. Kind of hope, you know, taking a bit of that force, mm -hmm. you know. Now, what about the bat wing assembly? Uh, does uh, that kind of get ate up a little bit? Or not really, because the majority of the gases bypass the wings here. Sure. Uh, it is aluminum. It's 7075. So 7075 has the strength of, of mild steel. So it's got plenty of strength there. It's not getting direct blasting sure. or powder blasting. More of a diversion. And any of the high-velocity gases are going to bypass the edges of it. I would imagine, too, that part is relatively inexpensive to replace should you need to. I mean, it is. Yeah. yeah. It is. That's pretty cool. And lifetime warranty on, on all of our suppressor systems. If you happen to wear something out, we'll, you wanna know. <laughs> we'll probably put it up on the wall and, and give you something cool as well as replace it. That's so that right. means you're really utilizing our product, and we're really happy to see that and, <laughs> and uh, appreciate the, the support with that. Well, in the scope of this video, we really would just want to kind of take some time to show you how this thing works and, and what it's all about and everything. Uh, this is a really wicked piece of hardware. I don't own a gun that it'll go on, but I may have to correct that. I'm gonna have to try to find uh, maybe a Serbu or some other type of gun that I can drop one of these on and we'll do a little bit of work with it. Cause uh, I mean, why not suppress the 50? It, it really works well. It's, it's kind of weird. It is. And a lot of people are real big fans of 338 Lapua, some of those other big Magnum 300 uh, Win Mag. Those rounds run around three to seven dollars a round. 50 BMG, uh, it's got a lot of bang for buck. You can often find these BMG rounds for under three bucks. Yep. So and it, the one, it, one thing that kind of like drew me to 50 BMG as well, and what I like about it, I kind of like the aspect of it's really like the biggest, baddest kind of hardware that a civilian can just go in a store and buy drop the money and walk out the door and bam, you got a 50. Like this is pretty much the, the king of the hill. In yeah. term, you know, before you start getting into DDs and weird things, I mean, yeah, there might be some one-off like the 929 JDJ and like, you know, some 20 millimeter Wildcats that some people have been playing with like 20 mil shells, neck down and things like that. That kind of stuff's cool, but it's one-offs and it's not commonly available, you know. This is one of those things that, you know, you can go into a lot of shops and find 50 cal ammo and there's a really growing amount of popularity uh, in the shooting world for people wanting to shoot 50 cal class stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like long range matches, people go and shoot with their 50s. And uh, man, there's just nothing like going to the range and shooting a 50. Like, I'm a 50 cal kind of guy, I love it. So I was really stoked to uh, to check this thing out. It's really cool. It, a lot of people are really excited to go shoot their 50 at the range. Nobody is ever excited to see somebody shooting the 50 at the range. But as you saw, whenever you shot it, the blast is really cut down. It, it, it brings the signature down. There's no disruption downrange to the side of you to give away the shooter's signature. Uh, it all directs a real low velocity poof out the front. Oh yeah. So it really is a pleasure to shoot and people want, whenever you show and take this thing out the range and they, they've seen it, they'll won't be like, oh man, not another one of those 50 you know, it, guys. It kind of makes the 50 a little more approachable too. You know, somebody that might be I don't want to say recoil shy, but you know, sometimes you know, you shoot a 50 cal like 107, and I always use a 107 as an example because it's one that I own. But when I'm shooting my 107, you know, people kind of like, oh God, you know, they they almost are a little bit intimidated to even get behind it because of those expanding gases are so violent and they'll throw stuff everywhere. It is one of those deals where something like this can make a 50 a little more approachable for people uh, to kind of get behind and want to give it a try, you know. So I think I'm definitely going to be looking at a, a a small or compact 50 cal rifle that I can drop something like this on. I'll be sending one out here uh, to Joe to get set up and we'll do a little bit more formal testing. We've got um, some access to some sound meters and things like that so maybe we can go out and really meter this thing but it's the quietest 50 cal can I've ever heard and I've I've heard pretty much all of the ones that are on the market which really it's a short list anyway. There's not there's a, a lot about, of 50 BMG cans out there. There's about six out there, uh, four of them which are considered 
production units sure. and a couple that are more boutique systems. Sure. Uh, but this, we are the quietest that I've tested uh, out of any of them. It's pretty cool. Well, Joe, thanks for taking the time to show us this. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, we've been here hanging out in Louisiana with Joe here at Aklis and just we have had such a wonderful time. Th these guys have been so awesome and they treat everybody that visits them like family. It's just really, really cool. And uh, we thought that this would merit kind of its own video because it is really, really awesome. Uh, we're going to be doing some other stuff with Joe and uh, the crew here. So expect some more content. Uh, we've had a great time. We're going to be doing a bunch of other stuff. Uh, maybe some meltdowns in the future related to, with some of their products that we'll be uh, kind of looking at. Also, their KSG suppressor. We're going to be checking that out in a future video as well. So stay tuned for that. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Uh, Joe, thanks for having me. Thanks again for coming shooting All our right. Rears. And that's the Hades. So uh, if you want to go to Hades, there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, have a good one. We'll catch you next time.